Welcome to the Luminous Fiber Arts Floss Tube channel. I'm Misty Purcell. Thanks so much for joining me today. I hope you've been well. I'm excited to be here to share with you a couple new designs I have coming out, um, some projects I've been working on, this cabinet behind me, and some other things I've been up to. So uh, let's get started. So if you're new here, I am a cross-stitch designer and I like to design cute cross-stitch patterns, things that have kind of a modern vintage feel to them. We just had Needlework Expo in the end of August. I had some new designs coming out for that, and so I shared on my last video the Halloween designs that I was releasing for Expo, and today I'll be showing you my new Mousecapades designs. I have a series that I've been releasing this year called Mousecapades, and there are seven small designs that can be stitched separately or into one large project. So let me show you those. So the series started with Mousecapades 1 and 2. This is Mice on Ice and this is on the house top. And then 3 and 4 came out in the summer. And this is a snow mouse. Hard to hold them correctly. Here, a snow mouse. And Reindeer Games. And then the two newest ones are five and six. And they are filling Santa's bag, number five. Six is trimming the tree. So we're getting close to Christmas. It's starting to feel a little bit of the pressure here. I'm not sure how many weekends there are left until Christmas, but I heard the number recently and it did startle me a bit. <laughs> and they're startled as well. So. Santa's getting ready for Christmas and he's filling his bag, but there's so many good children that he's having trouble fitting all the gifts in. So he calls in some assistance from one of the elves so that uh, everything can get stuffed in the bag. And then you can hear the Christmas song playing in the background. I personally like Nat King Cole's version. So Music's playing softly, they're trimming the tree, but if you're a mouse, you're kind of short and you can't reach the top of the tree very well, but instead of using a ladder, they have a reindeer to help them decorate the tree. So all of the models are stitched on 32 count smoky pearl linen by Zweigart using a mix of Classic Colorworks Floss, Weak Styleworks Floss, and DMC. So there are six separate patterns out now. There will be a seventh pattern that will be the final one that will be coming out later this fall. That one will be long and skinny. It will be the equivalent of three of these together. Um, and that'll be the final scene. So um, I've stitched them all separately and finished them as pillows for the model photos. This is Sequoia mini pom-pom trim from Lady.Creates. And I just used a fabric, a batik, that I thought complemented and, and coordinated with the pom-pom trim so that the thread could match and not be seen. So there's seven pillows, or you can stitch them all together. I have a complementary border on my website, and I will link it in the video, below the video, the description. And the complementary border uh, gives you the layout, a, a suggested layout. You don't have to lay it out that way. Um, for positioning all of the pieces. If you want to stitch them together, a fat quarter would be big enough for having room for framing if you're stitching on 32 count. So as part of my work in progress, um, I'll show you my progress on, I stitched all of the individual pieces and then I decided that I really wanted to have the whole thing together because it just looks amazing. So like the, the computer generated version that when I created it, I designed them all to be together, but they can stand alone. And that vision of what it would look like all together, I just can't get over it. So I had to do the whole thing together as well. But I'm going slower this time. I'm taking my time to stitch these. I don't have a rush deadline that I need to get done for. So I'll show you. I'm almost done with Mouse Capage 3. It's looking super cute. So you can see here the complementary border is this holly kind of border. So Mousecapade 7, the way that I laid it out, actually will go next, but you can skip past it by, you know, carrying on with the border. But the way I laid it out, Mousecapade 7 is in the middle, the long skinny piece, and then the bottom row has 
uh, five or four, five, and six. But you could easily put number seven at the bottom if you wanted to, and that would look fine too, I'm sure. So, yep, yeah, it's looking so cute. I love seeing them all together. It's so sweet. Yeah, it'll be exciting when I get this done. I had this fantasy I was going to have it done by the end of the year, but it's clearly just a fantasy at this point. <laughs> okay, so those are the new mouse capes. As I said, number seven will be coming out um, with the Christmas releases. I'll have three Christmas releases. I'm very excited to share those with you when the time comes. All the models are finished. The photographing is finished. I'm in the process of writing patterns. So yeah, I put a little sneak peek <clears throat> on my Instagram stories the other day of uh, a little bit of the model photography, just like a blurry photo, a little teaser. Um, okay, so that's the Mouse Capades. Expo went really well. Uh, thank you so much, um, Stitchers and Shops, for your orders. I really appreciate them. And it was so nice to chat with shops that stopped by my room. I enjoyed catching up with some other designers during the weekend. It was uh, very busy and then I was sick at the end. <laughs> so I don't know, it's just one of those things, but um, I'm, I'm feeling better. It's just a couple days of being sick. Uh, my mom came to help me ship at the end of the following week. She came on Thursday and <clears throat> I guess we'll just bounce around. I don't, I don't know why we can't. Let's talk about this. She brought this with her. So my mom drove from Michigan to Pennsylvania to help me and she brought this. So maybe mid-August or so, I was on Instagram and I follow this antique shop that's in Kalamazoo area because I'm from that area and I go back there a couple times a year. And I like that antique shop a lot. It's called Garden House Vintage Market. It's a great place. I love it. I love just looking at their stories. So in their stories, I posted a photo of this and said it was just in and I was like, oh my gosh, I have been looking for something like this. Something to store my patterns, you know, my own designs. Um, I've been run, running out of room and struggling. I had like a two drawer filing cabinet and then I was stacking these in different places and they're not super sturdy. Um, I had boxes piling up. It was just kind of a mess and I'm like looking for something more functional. So when I saw this, I was like, this might be the perfect thing for storing my patterns. So I immediately called my mom and she happened to be around that day. <laughs> and couldn't believe I got her actually I thought I'd be leaving a message uh, anyway she answered she said she'd be willing to go right over and look at it for me um I got the dimensions like I called the place got the dimensions and the price and everything it said all sounded good had my mom go look at it and then she bought it for me so that I could pay her back because uh I'm far away and she picked it up and then we were hoping it wouldn't rain the day she came because she has like a flatbed or like she has a truck that doesn't have a um cap on it so um anyway luckily no rain she got here safely and then we hauled it up the stairs with the help of my boyfriend and moved a bunch of stuff around in my room to make it fit I wasn't quite sure I was kind of low energy that weekend kind of recovering from I think having been sick and an expo and, and going back to work but mom powered through <laughs> so um one thing that made my space kind of unfunctional is that I had had a loom in the corner of the room over there and um, I had left that space more or less so that if I wanted to move the loom back in there because now in my living room that I could but we we took that away which made the room much better so I had my mom just help me she's really good at like Tetris and organizing things and figuring out how to fit like as much stuff into one space as you can so she had me moving some things around the room feels so much better um, it was quite a project of shifting things and vision on my mom's part. And then, you know, I handled it as best I could. <laughs> I, I struggle with, I can reorganize things and I like to reorganize things and purge things. But, um, that point where things are kind of all over the place and messy is hard for me. And there was a point where there was just stuff everywhere and we were trying to move stuff that was big. And it's like, can't we just like put some things back? I was very... I was very stressed by the the mess of it all but we got it all put away and it looks amazing and actually like 
I'm excited to come in here and work now. The, the feng shui of the room is better. I turn the table I, I work at a different direction and now it's easier to move from like my sewing table to the work table with my chair. It's just a million times better. So like a million thank yous to my mother, which I've already thanked her a million times, but just a million more thank yous. <laughs> so you can see that there's labels on this cabinet. This cabinet is oak. I'm guessing it's from the 30s-ish. I'm not sure. Uh, and they added some things to it, you know, these new um, labels. So this is just temporary, like some painter's tape so we could figure out where all the patterns are going in alphabetical order. I let my mom organize it. So she did like Christmas on one side and Halloween on the other. And you really get a sense of how much Christmas and Halloween I design based on that. And then there's kind of a mix of some fall and non-seasonal stuff over here. Um, and so, yeah, she just powered through and organized all this stuff for me and did an amazing job. So, um, yeah, the table come off soon. Don't panic. <laughs> but you can see, I don't know exactly what this once was. It seems like it could have been like a printer's cabinet, except that there's no dividers in the drawers. So I don't know if you happen to know more than me, let me know. But so there's, um, um, uh, scrapbook paper, it's 12 by 12 pieces of scrapbook paper inside. They don't quite cover the bottom. So we put like two pieces in. We, mom, put two pieces in. So that is what it looks like. And then there's just some bigger drawers at the bottom. I'll insert a photo so you can see the whole thing. There's bigger drawers at the bottom. There's a couple spots where the drawers are gone. And then they put some boxes in there instead. So I've been using the boxes for like larger patterns or when I have larger collections of patterns, more copies. Um, so anyway, it's just working out really well. I'm super happy with this piece. I think it's gorgeous. And it makes my space look better and more professional. I'm more organized. It's all amazing. So yes, I'm very happy. And I love old furniture. So yeah, just checks all my boxes. Okay, so um, I think we'll go back to talking about projects I'm working on now. And um, I have a couple projects going and a finish. Um, so I'll show you one thing that I have here. I am just slowly working away on this Busilla kit and I'm currently working. I really love mittens and stockings. I mean, I'm a knitter, so I, I just love that kind of stuff, especially tiny ones. So this really attracted me. So I'm doing the snowman. This is not, um, it's out of print. It's, it's not available except on secondary markets. It is, I'm just going to see which one it's called. 86156 is the number. If you're looking for it, you can look for it on eBay, probably, <clears throat> or Etsy. Um, so I'm enjoying it. I, I got a little stalled when I don't work on it for a while, which is often because I have to remember what I'm doing. And it's a little bit different from the way I've made things before, but I am getting the hang of it. I just think I need to, um, even though it tells you like what order to put things in, I think I just need to think through it a little bit differently next time and maybe use a little bit less thread. Sometimes when they want you to use like several strands of thread, it's just more than I really like, but whatever. Anyway, this looks super cute. So he needs his scarf. I have to put the little pieces together on the scarf and then all the bling and then figure out how to do that fringe thing there on the scarf. And then sew, um, sew the front to the back. So it's not gonna be, I'm not doing silverware holders. These will be ornaments. This will be, I'll add some kind of a hanger to it when I'm done. But there's a chance this could be done for this Christmas, I think. <laughs> I love all the bling on these. I love Busillas. It's cute. It's blingy. I, I'm just all about all of those things. So that's coming along well. And you have to stuff him a little bit, like his head and his hat. And I imagine the scarf might be stuffed too. I'll have to check that. So, um... What else have I been working on? I've been weaving and I'll insert some photos of the things I've been working on. I finished these three towels for my mom and they're like a red and a natural color. And I thought they would just be ones that she would like and her birthday was coming up and um, she was here over her birthday. So we I gave her some gifts, including the towels. We went out for brunch. It was really nice. Um, so the towels are like a twill. They're from um, an issue of Handwoven, a back issue of Handwoven magazine. 
I think it's September, October, 2014. I'm not sure, but it's called don't, don't get bored towels. And they were interesting. They were like just enough going on to keep you interested. And then each towel was a little different. I felt like, um, the placement of the stripes as recommended in the pattern, um, was maybe a little, it looked fine when the towel was all spread out, but to me folded up and hanging over like a hook or a bar of some kind on like a, a an oven, seemed like the, the stripe was placed a little too high. So I think I would weave those again. I really liked it. I like the patterns and everything, but I would just um, make the stripe lower next time. I think it would look better visually, just maybe an inch lower. So um, I finished those for my mom, really like them, love the colors. It's like a brick, that brick red is just uh, so good. I need to get more of that yarn. And then I started a project from the Jane Stafford um, School of Weaving, the online classes. So I had showed you in, I think it was my last video, the several samples that I had woven, and that was from that class. And so now I'm doing another set of samples. This one's wider, so I should actually be able to use it as a towel, and that's my plan. But you do like a smaller sample and it's called color and weave. And so you're basically learning how alternating light and dark threads in your warp and then doing the same thing in your weft creates patterns, like visual patterns that look really complex, but you're not really doing anything complex in the actual weaving of the project. So the hard part for me was winding the warp of that project because you had to have so many um, strands of yarn in your hand at one time, like five. And that was a lot for me. I had trouble like keeping it from twisting and things. I found the warp winding to be the very worst part of it and very challenging, but everything else has really been fine. And um, the patterning looks so cool on this project. I really like it. So you do like a sampler that has all these different squares and you can see all the patterns. And then she encourages you to do one where the whole piece is all dark and one where the whole piece is all light. And I decided that instead of doing that, I would just alternate squares of light and dark because um, I thought that'd be a little bit more interesting and I could still get the same idea. And then I'm doing one where it's the opposite. So you're basically weaving it the way you warped it. So if you did like light, dark, light, dark, light, dark, then you'd weave light, dark, light, dark, light, dark. And so now I'm doing the opposite, flipping whatever I warped it as just to see if there's any, what, like what kind of difference there is. And then you're supposed to play. I've got six yards on the loom or maybe six and a half. Um, I always get kind of stuck in the play mode because I don't really know what I want to do with it. Um, I do want to try using some thicker weft yarns, like a slub yarn and um, a boucle. So I know that I will plan to do that pretty soon, but I'll probably do like one more project before I switch to that. I'm not quite sure what I want to do. So I'm going to rewatch the video uh, and see kind of what some of the inspiration pieces are there. So that's what I've been doing with weaving and I'm just kind of working on everything bits and pieces where I can. So sometimes I do weaving a couple days a week. I'm, you know, the other day I did this uh, Busilla kit. I'm working on the mouse capades a little bit here and there. And I've got all kinds of like finishing stuff and prepping for upcoming designs going on. So it's just kind of all over the place. Um, and the other thing that I've been doing that I've really been enjoying is drawing. And I've been drawing on my iPad in Procreate. Um, Procreate is a very inexpensive app that you can get for your iPad that works with an Apple Pencil. And so I have, I'm not sure which iPad I have, I think it's a couple years old, um, but it works with the Apple Pencil. And I really enjoy Procreate, but I've found it to be a little bit complicated to learn. So I like learn it in bits and pieces, watching tutorials, either like on YouTube or Skillshare. Um, but I've been thinking a lot lately about how much I love mid-century illustration. And um, I love the, the cheerfulness and happiness of it, the cuteness of it. I love that style and it just feels very nostalgic to me. And I'm sure that has um, unconsciously inspired my work as a cross-stitch designer. But I thought, well, why don't I um, try to learn to draw like mid-century style and be more conscious about it and so I watched some tutorials and I thought at least it would help me learn to get better at drawing. It would help me get better at procreate. And, you know, I'd learn something about the style of the mid-century illustration. So, um, 
yeah, so I did a tutorial by um, Lisa Bardo. That's a mid-century inspired drawing. And I started making a Pinterest board of mid-century or mid-century inspired illustrations I liked. And I found another kind of tutorial and I bought some of the brushes that are supposed to be in that style that create kind of neat patterns and textures. Um, so kind of some things that I took away were a limited color palette, which is hard for me to work within most of the time. Uh, that would be like characteristic of mid-century illustration and um, like kind of sharp, clean lines, but also maybe like ink where um, it's not like a perfect line. I mean, it, it is, but you know, the ink bleeds a bit, uh, but more like sharp angles and the shapes and not everything being outlined, just like lines where one thing is crossing over another in the illustration. So I took all those things. I looked at drawings I liked and then I tried to replicate them not by like tracing them or anything but just looking at them and then trying to do a sketch that was the same thing and then beginning to create those things and that was really helpful actually like it was a really interesting learning tool and it was fun and I was kind of surprised at well procreate makes me look good I have to say like I don't think it would look anywhere near as I don't know how to use all those pens and pencils I'm not trained in art of any kind I am only self-taught really you know I've taken a couple Skillshare classes of this or that thing on Procreate but my drawing is is just I didn't I didn't learn um in a class or anything I haven't had actual proper training anyway so this is how I'm learning and I think I would benefit from some more formal training I think one thing that kind of holds me back is I don't, I don't want to do anything I don't want to do at this point like I feel I'm too opinionated. I'm too old. Uh, if you want me to draw a still life of a bowl of fruit, I'm going to be like, no. <laughs> Can I draw something else? Can I put faces on it? I don't know. Like, I just wouldn't be up for that. So I don't know how well I would do in a formal art class just because I think I, I would know these are the things I want to draw and I don't care about other stuff. So don't, don't make me waste my time. Maybe I'm wrong about how an art class would go. Regardless, I'm doing my own kind of self-training, learning from other people by trying to see what they did and seeing if I can replicate it. And I felt like I had good success and it was really enjoyable. So um, let's see, what did I replicate? I, well, I did the Procreate class with Lisa Bardot. And let me see here. So I did hers and that was really fun. And so if you are interested in learning how to use Procreate and learning how to draw, that would be a great one because she takes you through all these different steps. Um, I can link her video below. Then I tried one that was like a little camping scene that was through um, Retro Supply Company. And that one is not really a tutorial. It's more like, here's what some brushes can do. And I slowed it down like as slow as YouTube will let you make a video and watched it a million times to try to be able to replicate what he was doing. It was hard, um, but it was interesting. And then I took a piece of artwork from, I think it's called the Family Meal Planner from the 50s. I'll have to put in some names of artists and stuff as I look this up because I don't have it to hand. Um, so I replicated some really cute, there was um, cute illustrations in this cookbook. Um, and I loved them and they were simple and it was a good place to start. Not a lot of colors, mostly like some line drawing and ink. And um, then I did this like weather scene. I don't know who the artist is of that one, but that one was fun. And then there's this book called The Clumsy Cowboy. Oh my gosh, is it cute? And so, you know, they had some of the scenes on like Pinterest, which is how I came across like most of the things that I'm looking at. And it was just so adorable. I had to... I had to learn, I had to see if I could replicate it. And it came out really well and it was fun. And some of the tricks of, of Procreate is just figuring out like what goes on what layer so that certain things get covered up, certain things don't get covered up and you can isolate things when you wanna um, edit them and things like that. So that's mainly the thing that I'm trying to figure out at this point. Anyway, I saw so many cute illustrations posted from this book, The Clumsy Cowboy that I ordered. <laughs> I ordered it. I'm like, I need this in my life, it's so cute. If I would, if I'd had that book as a kid, I would have loved it. And then um, I tried to replicate this really cute scene from Annalise Straws of um, 
hot cocoa. I just like the saying and the simplicity, like today is a hot chocolate kind of day. I'm all for that. And she actually sells that as a poster on her website. So um, I'll link to her website so you can check that out. And then lastly, I did this replication of a drawing by Kaylee Hicks. And she works for Disney. Um, you know, she's that good. I've bought some of her fabric because she put some of her art on like Spoonflower fabric. And this scene is, um, looks to be like it's from the Rudolph movie, The Claymation Christmas, which I used to love as a kid. I still love it as an adult. I own that movie. And I watch it, like, every year. And as I get older, I feel like Santa is a lot grumpier than I remember him being as a child. And the, all, all the adults are kind of grumpy in that movie. Um, except for, um, what's the guy's name? The minor guy. Oh my gosh. I can't think of his name, but you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, so I replicated that scene and that was really, really fun. And it's fun to like watch the stop or the, the playback, the time-lapse videos because Procreate will let you, it records like everything you do and then you can watch it back on video. And it's just really interesting to see even like, I like watching other people's work. I even like seeing how I work because it's just interesting to see it come together. It's just fun. So I did those things and I just started to start going my own way. I felt like, oh, and I also did Ed Emerly. I got this book, oh, it's so good, of um, Halloween drawings. And I saw like a preview that he would show you like the shapes you needed. I'm like, well, surely I can do this, right? It's just shapes. And I don't tend to think of drawing in shapes. I tend to just try to like replicate what I'm seeing. Um, but it was fun to do. And honestly, like, it was really straightforward and fun and I enjoyed putting the scene together and I really liked his his drawings and his style. Um, I would like to get more of his books because it was just really fun. So it was a little dis disclaimer that I'm not interested in violating anyone's copyright. I am just learning how to draw. I'm not going to turn any of these things into cross stitch. They aren't mine to do that with. Um, I just wanted to learn their techniques and try to get better. So I'm not taking anything from any of these artists and trying to translate it into cross stitch. I would never, would never do that. Um, I would only ever take my own artwork that was original and try to do something with it in cross stitch. Uh, so just to be clear that that's not, not the intention, that's not the plan, that won't happen. So then um, I started, I decided I was ready to try making my own mid-century inspired drawing and I drew this little Santa and he was really fun to draw and I was really pleased with how he turned out. I thought he was really cute and you know my style but with a twist because I don't tend to do in my drawing or even really in my designing like sharp lines and sharp angles and so it was like a stretch but also fun to do something different and yeah it was it's fun to put different layers and then kind of do some shading and I don't really know Again, I haven't been trained in art, so I don't really know about shading. I'm trying to learn something I'm trying to get better at. I think it adds a lot to the, the drawings. Um, so I made this little Santa. I thought you might enjoy watching the stop motion video, or the stop motion video, the time-lapse video. I thought you might enjoy seeing how he came together. So I'm gonna insert that here. Okay, so that's Santa. And then I went on to do this little witch and uh, I couldn't quite figure out how I wanted to style her body. So I looked at this, um, I happened to come across this cookbook. I really liked the cover 
and I liked that the colors had it was like blue with black and orange which made me think of Halloween and I liked that the shape of the chef was like this kind of cylinder so I used that as inspiration that my shape of the witch was going to be a cylinder and I liked the colors you know so I replicated the lines that are on the, the dress underneath the apron I replicated that um, I had her holding a broom rather than that weird pole thing she's got um and then some of that like curly cue stuff that's in the stove I thought would be cool to try to replicate that in the design as like you know steam coming out of the cauldron and I thought about making this like a cookbook cover and so I thought about putting the same kind of title on it and then just changing it to like a witch's name but that didn't do anything for me so I left it off and just drew it like this and it was really a fun project and then I did some reindeer so I was looking at another artist and he just had like a, a Christmas scene of reindeer kind of coming down in the sky <clears throat> really really great art by the way there's some amazing art being made by illustrators right now um yeah and I just like his retro style but anyway I just wanted to see like could I draw reindeer that were very you know kind of angular and shapes like rectangles and and triangles and things like that so you know their face is basically kind of like a triangle their body is a rectangle um and it just was really fun you know it was, it's outside of my normal way of working like this isn't a style I would normally use to draw but I really enjoyed it and found it like easier to do than I would think I guess because it doesn't I'm not trying to be realistic exactly I don't know it's really fun I'm really having a great time so this scene was just super, super fun to create. And um, yeah, I'm just, I'm having so much fun. So, uh, you know, maybe some of these things will find their way into cross stitch. I did have some requests after showing the Santa that I made, the one that I was my own creation about turning that into a cross stitch. So I'm working on that to see. I find that, uh, you know, it doesn't really work that well for me to just pull like one of my drawings into the cross stitch software and have it translate it into stitching I think it's more <clears throat> it needs to be larger and more detailed than what I typically do so what seems to work better for me is either just looking at it the picture and trying to redraw it in the cross stitch software or importing the picture and kind of tracing it and then tweaking it a bunch but it makes it simpler um, so I'm playing with that right now to see if uh, I can make Santa into some kind of a cross stitch pattern. So I'm really just having a good time and it's been nice to do something for fun that's uh, no pressure, I think, or that's probably not no pressure, but it's low pressure um, because, you know, I never, when I'm designing or drawing, I never know if anything I do is going to turn out. I don't know if it's going to be good. I don't know if I can do it. I'm just like, well, let's see if I can, um, you know, it's not like I ever sit down knowing that this is going to go well and it's going to turn into a design. It's always a, let's see if I can make this happen. I don't know. Um, I think there's a certain amount, at least for me, there's just a certain amount of like risk, I guess, that you're willing to take on every time you make something that it might not turn out. And, you know, it might be kind of wasted time, except that it's a learning experience. Um, but you don't have control over whether something goes well. Hopefully you get better at it over time. But I mean, I have stuff that I've designed that doesn't work and I don't put it out. So, and there's plenty of drawings in my sketchbook and in my Procreate that aren't good. <laughs> plenty. <laughs> but it's nice to get to a point where I feel like I am having more things that look good. Um, or that I'd be more willing to share. So, um, so that's what I've been up to lately in terms of projects I've been working on. Um, I got a couple new things in my shop that I wanted to share with you. So, um, from Expo, I got a couple of things from Teresa Kogut that I really loved. Of course, this book, Hello Halloween, because the sampler is just everything. <laughs> I might have to stitch it myself, even though it's huge. And um, if I did, I, 
I first thought it would take five years. I'm like, well, you should double that. So if I ever start this, it's going to take me 10 years and I'm just going to go into it expecting that. So I got a copy for me and there's some for my shop. And I also thought this house, <laughs> the angry house. Oh my gosh. I mean, I don't know, just that face. Let's see if my face isn't in the way. Hopefully it focuses. I might have to insert a better picture for you. The face on that house, plus the kitty and the witch, it's just so sweet. Her designs were all great, but these two particularly caught my eye. Lots of amazing designs coming out for Expo. Really enjoyed seeing everyone's work. Uh, so I have those in my shop. I have a couple of handwoven towels in my shop, and I'll just kind of add them from time to time as I have them. And uh, be sure to sign up for my newsletter to get the latest information about new designs coming out when I have fabric, um, if I have any kind of a special subscriber thing, sometimes I do like a special gift for subscribers. So that's a good, um, it's the only way to get that uh, because I don't share it immediately elsewhere. It's just on the, um, just for the subscribers at that time. So I have different things that are fun for subscribers and hopefully the um, newsletters are entertaining. I try to make them fun to read so that you, you know, have a little, enjoyment in your day. Um, so you can sign up for my newsletter. The link is in the description below the video. You can catch up with me. I post regularly on social media, particularly Instagram. Um, I'm at Luminous Fiber Arts on Instagram. I'm on Facebook, um, on Pinterest, Luminous Fiber Arts also, all those places. So you can find me all those places. And um, Hope that you've been well. I hope that you're having, you know, some time to stitch and things aren't too crazy. I know fall can be a busy time for everyone. It has been for me. I'm back to teaching and I have a very busy fall teaching schedule. Um, and it was just quite uh, an adjustment this time because it seemed like I just constantly had new people in my classes every day. <laughs> so, I teach a hybrid course that's partially online and partially in person. And so the in-person portion of the class is two days a week. <clears throat> so the first week of classes happens and, you know, it's the drop ad period. So you expect there to be fluctuation and people coming and going and that's fine. And so the very, was it the first day of class? I think it was the first day of class. I'm 20 minutes into the lesson the students were writing something and in walks a student. He says, hi. And then another student walks in and another student walks in and I can see a line of them in the hall. And I'm like, that's a lot of people. <laughs> What's going on? And they said that they had been in another building. Six people came in. They'd been in another building waiting for class to start. They realized something was wrong when no one else showed up. And then they saw that the class was in the building that we were all in. And so as they all file in, there aren't enough desks for everyone because there were already 24 people, I think. And the cap is actually 22. I was told that I might have 24 people or 20. I think they said two or three extra students we might have because of a class being canceled. So I already had as many people as I thought I was going to get. Anyway, these people all come in in the middle of class. I, pu I push the desk, the, the, t the table at the beginning, the front of the room is kind of for the teacher, into the room for them. And then one of them has to sit on my seat, which is this really tall chair, like right in the front of the room. So she's perched up above everyone else at the front of the room because there were no other chairs. So there's 29 desks or 28 desks, 29 student chairs and anyway. I figured out what happened is that they weren't all in my class, but they all just went with whoever checked their phone and saw where the class was. But those kids were actually distributed amongst several sections that were meeting at that time. And they didn't check their email or they forgot. So they all just came with the one girl, but there were only like one or two kids from that group in my class. So if I email all the kids or I talk to them after class and I'm like, hey, double check your schedule. There's no way you're all in this class. <laughs> so then the next 
class period. I'm assuming that class is all resolved. I print out my new class list for the day and I go around and I take attendance from the list. And then a student raises his hand and he's like, you didn't call me. And so then there were four kids in my class still, not from that group that came in. Four kids that had been in my class on Monday that were there on Wednesday that were not on my list. And I'm like, did you check your schedule very carefully to make sure that the room was correct? And they're like assuring me yes. And I'm like, okay, well, I don't know what's going on, but you're not registered for this class. I'll have to find out after class. So then I go find out that at least three of them are in another class. I don't know what they're doing in my class, but they're probably all in the same class. So then I had to email all those kids and tell them, you're not in my class. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Then, this is like never happens. It's always, you know, it's always something. It's always something different. Uh, then the next week, so I was sick on Monday. I had to have a substitute. I had one new student that had added, but I had seen that he had added. So everything's fine. I go to class on Wednesday. And this is a different class. Right as I'm starting class, some kid walks in. And says he joined the class. Now the drop ad period has ended. There's no reason he should be in my class at that point without someone telling me we had to add this kid. So I've received no notification. This kid shows up. We're about to do an essay. I don't know what's going on. I'm like, well, I need to find out if you're really in this class before I let you write this essay. Turns out he was. They, the university just added him without telling me. Um, yeah. <laughs> so finally, all the kids that are gonna be in the class or in the class. And then I start getting the emails from people who wanna join the class because of this or that problem. And I'm like, no, <laughs> this is all I can take. <laughs> so it feels like finally, this is um, the middle of week four. Finally, I'm kind of settling into like where I need to go, who is supposed to be there, what everyone's name is and what is going on. So we're getting the routine finally. Uh, it's been a challenge, but it, it has been good. I've enjoyed the students. I feel like they're good students. Um, the fall semester is always a energetic time with people being very enthusiastic, especially the freshmen are excited to be there, which is always a really nice place to be. Once you hit spring, everybody's kind of jaded and exhausted and you just do your best to kind of get them through to the summer. <laughs> but fall, there's a lot of energy and, and excitement. So it's a nice, nice time to be on campus. And I'm doing a little bit better coping with my schedule. It's uh, been an adjustment these past couple of years, teaching so many sections in a row, uh, but I'm getting more used to it and yeah, handling it better. I used to do it. I just haven't done it in a long time. So uh, yeah, so that's going well. So that's what I've been up to and I'll probably be back. It'll probably be about a month or just a little bit over a month before I'm back here again. Um, so in the meantime, I hope that you're well. Thank you so much for spending time with me today. And I'm so glad that you enjoyed my last video. Really appreciate all the feedback. I'm glad you enjoyed hearing about my design process. Um, so thank you for your comments, your kind comments. And hope you enjoyed this video too. Um, and I will see you again in about a month. Be well and take care.